Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neil, and I'm joined by director Teresa Nivatova, director of Night Siren. Hello. Hi. Hello. It's good to have you here. Yeah, it's good to be there or here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You say that now, but if if you get uh, if you get sick of me, you can hang up and later on. Okay. All right. You're not supposed to do it, but uh, so for people not aware, can you give them an idea of what Night Siren is? Okay, so it is a. Uh, actually, it's really hard to put it in a box because it's. I wouldn't say it's a mystery drama. Someone says it's a folk horror. Someone says a psychological horror. You know, I've heard. Someone says a thriller. I've heard all kinds of stuff. But for me, it's a movie with the creepy atmosphere, of course. And it's set in the uh, in the Slovak mountains, uh, in the village that is kind of cut off from uh, civilization a little bit, but it's set in the present time. And it's about the witches in the present time. I also like that you said you can't really put it in a box because that's what I like about festival movies is it's a lot of stuff that, you know, it's not just one genre and it's it's hard. And does did that make it hard at all, actually, when you're submitting it to festivals? I wouldn't say this is a problem in the festivals. Uh, it's usually um, an issue when you're trying to communicate with public for distribution because, of course, every distributor wants to put it in a box because that's how they want to communicate to with public. In festivals, people are kind of used to seeing weird movies or movies that are maybe different. So, so yeah. So in festivals, it, it actually did quite well because it can, you know, people like, blending genres and, and, you know, fantastical elements, but also very grounded characters and drama. So, so this is all what my movie has. So, so festivals are actually a great platform for it. And is uh, Night Siren the act, is, is that the direct translation of your original title? No, it's not. It's not because, uh, because the title is um, like a made up word and it wouldn't really it's like the literal translation translation is a light the night which doesn't have much sense uh in uh in english so we were looking for something that would that would have maybe similar mood or similar you know feeling to it uh as as the as the title in slovak Untrue, because I did look up the original title to see if it was like an actual legend or anything, and I really couldn't find anything about it, so I was interested. There is a there is this um, like a cre- mythical creature in our um, culture that is called Svetlo Nož, and it's like a thing that uh, it's like a light that that is luring you to these like uh, swamps, and then uh, it kills you there. So, oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, that could kind of go into later on in the movie, out in the woods, with uh, some of the weird stuff going on. Yeah, 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 it is. But that's why we kind of uh, will be changed that because it's not about this creature; it's yeah, it's yeah. about this woman and this society. But, uh, but yeah, we wanted to work something that is a little bit close to the to our cultural folk myths. Yeah. So, is there um? Wh- when did the story come about for you? Like, uh, when did you start writing this? Was there like an event or something that like inspired it? Um. It was, uh, there was some things that inspired it. One was the book that was this uh, anthropological book that uh, Barbara Namerova, who is like co-script writer of yeah. this, uh, read. And it was a research in modern Slovak villages uh, where she found out that people still believe in witches till today. And it's people like us, you know, like it was pretty surprising because I'm coming from the city and, you know, it's like, I know Slovakia is not very well known in America, but it's it's it, it looks like here, you know, it's not very different. But yeah, uh, the mental space might be a little bit different. So so this surprised us. And then um, another inspiration came from our uh, cottage in the woods that our fathers uh, bought when they were young, and is this like hundred year old cabin with no electricity and no running water. And when I was trying to find out who was living there before actually living there, not just going there for holidays as, as we did. Uh, I found out there was this woman, Otila, who 
was walking barefoot and everybody was scared of her and she was kind of living there with these bears and wolves and snakes and uh so 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 we kind of were inspired by the character and created this whole story but third i would say like big inspiration was also just living um a woman life in the society where we are and we kind of brought also a lot of personal uh stuff into our story well, there's a lot of interesting things there. the last part you said about you know living your life you know a woman in in regular uh the world um because the movie does feel like you know you it's like these real backwards people but at the same time it's a lot of things that i think a lot of people could uh you know, it could feel empathy for, for your character for that happens in modern day. So it's not so much uh, that these people are backwards, which they are, but there's a lot of stuff that still happens, you know, for, for everyone. Yeah, everywhere, like uh, everywhere in the world, I would say, because, you know, you might say, OK, superstition and belief in witches is something that is not here anymore. But we have conspiracies. We, you know, people believe in all kinds of crazy yeah, stuff, right? like somebody's sucking blood of children and being dinosaurs. You know, I don't know. I yeah. when every time I hear all these conspiracies, it's kind of crazy. But, but it's not very far from uh, witch beliefs. So, so we are just changing the language, but it's uh, the, the thing is the same, basically. Yeah, especially the last several years, like on social media and even. Um... There's a real rise in uh, kind of like the satanic panic. People believe in Moloch and uh, like you said, uh, that that people that like Tom Hanks, like eats babies and all these. And it's <laughs> if you would have told me this years ago, I'd think, oh, no one's going to believe that. But and it's people that I would I wouldn't think or in my mind, it would be someone who lives like in the backwoods, like in the movie. But it's, you know, people that are on, you know, Facebook and stuff who are using the Exa computer. Exactly. So it's not like technology's uh, brought to humanity some, like, great wisdom, although we have all these encyclopedias in our pockets. But still, we are looking for simple answers, I would say. And there is, of course, a lot more fear because everything is super complicated. And with technologies, we can see that it's even more complicated than we thought. And everything that we don't know kind of caused this fear in us, I would say, and, and, and we, we don't want to, we don't like it because we don't know it. And, and I think this is what creates this hatred that can, you know, uh, go to violence. And, and this is what I was trying to talk about in my movie too. And even there's a later scene in your movie where one of the characters uses a cell phone and it kind of is almost jarring because at that point I'm kind of, you're almost feeling like this is another another time period, and then they have a cell phone. I was like, oh yeah, this is like modern day. Yeah, yeah, I like it because yeah, you know it this works is in the movie. yeah this it works and and I also I just wanted to put it in a present time because I didn't want to uh, make it look or feel like I'm commenting on something that is historical. This is not historical. This is still we we are still dealing with ancient problems in this society today. And I this is what I was trying to point out that you know we are not moving much further, and you know we have to do something to 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 move. And I think all of my characters are scared of the different things, but also trying to find the way. You know, like the main characters are trying to find a way out of of, of the situation and. And I think they find it in connection, in their relationship, and also, I would say, in nature, because that's not as dangerous as we would think. Yeah, the people are the they're the more the uh, honestly, the animals that I think about it, the snakes, the wolves, like uh, I don't think they really do anything to any not to spoil your movie, but you know, it's the people that are the danger. Yeah, this is like this is why I also worked with genre because there are all these like horror tropes where we are so used to that witches are bad and evil, and when you have like uh, wolves or snakes, they are also like connected with some evil, I don't know, whatever uh, power. And I just wanted to flip these narratives. I just wanted to show like, oh, it doesn't have to be this way, you know? It's maybe witches are just women who are maybe a little different. Uh, then the majority of society will want to live in a different life, and and animals are just animals, you know. So so it's like, what is the what is horrific is what is in us actually, 
yeah. I'm I'm glad you said that because I always have a problem with uh, movies where the witches actually are real and evil because I think that um, the the you know the witch trials the witch hunts like back in I'm in Massachusetts so not very far from Salem and so uh, the horror of that is that you know the people that hunt, hunted down the witches. So if you have a movie where the witches really are evil, you're kind of saying that like the people hunted witches were right. Yes, exactly. And and you can see this narrative even in a great movies like The Witch. I you know? agree, yeah. So it's like you rarely... I don't even know any movie that they, are, they have witches that are not these evil uh, personas. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to say anything bad. Obviously, a witch looks great, but that's always been my issue with it. I was like, well, you're kind of saying that, that the... Uh, the Puritans were right in the movie. Yeah, yeah. And women, are, are, <laughs> women has these evil powers, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um, where where did you, were you familiar with the area you shot in? Because it looks great. And like, uh, like finding like the, like the cl- uh, perfect cliff to, to film that scene. Yeah, the cliff. It's actually, uh, it's funny with that cliff because it used to have a railing because it's very dangerous there. You can fall and really die. (laughs) And they were shooting some Hollywood movie there and they put away the railing and they never... (laughs) They never put it back. 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 (laughs) Yeah. They're like, who cares about... We're out of here now. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, mean, it's kind of dangerous. So, yeah, this is in... uh, Yeah, this is in Slovakia. We have beautiful mountains and the specific area where we shot the majority of the movie that's that's very close to the cabin I told you about. And the village is the village I know since my childhood. So like also a lot of villagers were, were playing in the movie and, and yeah, it's a place that I'm very familiar with. And, and also that's why I want us also, I wanted this forest that are, that has this like mystic powers or it, it feels like it. That's why I was looking for a pine trees for a higher mountains, you know, not something that, could be dangerous or something that you know is more like darker green and and where you actually have these animals because you know even when we were shooting there were we always uh, came across some some uh footprints of bears and wolves and stuff like that so so it's yeah and we even shot with like uh sheep we had like i don't know 100 sheep there on on the shoot and Two weeks later, we heard from uh, those people that uh, they were killed, like 60 of sheep were killed by wolves. So it's a pretty harsh environment, and the shooting was also harsh. But I I don't know. I just wanted to also bring to the audience this feeling like, let's go to the forest. Let's go to, to you know, more natural environment, and let's just get offline sometimes uh i think you know you don't want to say it because you don't want to preach to people but if they see a movie where they feel like they are there then maybe they will go and maybe they will i don't know connect with themselves a little better than through social media and everything yeah and um so i i saw the screener on my uh on my laptop here but i imagine seeing uh the landscapes on the big screen uh looks amazing Yes, yes. That's why I was happy it um, it went around the world on, on festivals. And even now it's on big screens in New York and L.A. I, I'm always happy when people see it actually big. Because it's like when you see it small, especially yeah. during the day and there's a lot of night scenes, you, you cannot have the same experience. Yeah, and you can't escape. When you're in the theater, you can't escape. So I, I guess you could get it on your phone, but you'd be kind of an ass to do that. But you know, in the yeah. theater, it's there in front of you, it's big, you can't escape, and the sound's all around you. It works. Yes, yes, exactly. exactly. So what was that like to watch uh, watch your movie for the first time with an audience, that your first festival? Very nervous. Because <laughs> I didn't really quite know um, whether people will understand it, because it's still, it's from... Our small country, small village, it deals with all these weird traditions we have. And uh, so, yeah, so I, I was not quite sure whether people will get it, uh, what I'm trying to say there. Uh, but they did. And we even won this award in Locarno Film Festival. So so it was it was pretty great. And I was I was meeting people on the street there and they were like telling me like, oh, I, I'm going to see it again. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was really nice, and I went uh, then to quite a few festivals. Always 
great to meet people. So yeah, but at the same time, I should say, like when you have your premiere, you already saw your movie so many times that you're super sick of it. You don't want to <laughs> ever see it again. And you cannot even watch it as an audience because this is what you're trying to do the whole time when you're editing. Like, okay, trying to figure out like, I never saw this scene. I'm going to put myself in that emotional space, which is hard when you know it like a poem in your head, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. So now when I'm on the festival or any screening, I just I just say hello in the beginning and I'm waiting <laughs> until it ends. <laughs> <laughs> right. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have to mention the cast is amazing. The uh, film. I wanted to say, especially the the two the duo, because everyone's good in the movie. But um, had you worked with um the two main actresses before? No, no, never. Actually, uh, this was the first movie for Eva, the the really? actress that played Mira. Yeah. So it was her first uh, in front of camera experience, I and that, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, she was great, and. No, I haven't worked with them before, um, and but it was a long casting process. I always try to make sure the all the relationship and all this combination works together. I I, I don't like to cast based on self tapes or something that you know. I I actually need to, you know, be there with people and see if I can work with them. If we can, if we are on the same page, and I never have like a image in my head how the character should look but i have some emotional image like what is their emotional landscape and if if they can get get there and with natalia and eva it was it was great they could get there and i and then for me it was mostly about whether they can have this relationship this chemistry that is super important because even if they are two women you know you're basically casting like as if you're casting a romantic movie with a, you know, with a main couple, it still needs to work. So, yeah, it was good that they knew each other because they were studying together. So Yeah, because yeah, we all see know. movies with even two great actors. If they don't have chemistry, it doesn't work. It's not always, yeah. just, you know, the yeah, actual yeah, yeah. talent. Yeah. And I assume uh, they got to see the movie with audiences uh, at festivals too? Oh, yeah, they were there with me in the uh, first festival in Locarno. Uh, so it was... It was quite a great experience to be with them. And uh, and now, even now, Natalia is in New York. So we had like a oh, New cool. York premiere and she was there with me. So, yeah. So so so, th so sometimes, you know, I would send them to festival that I cannot go to or something. So they, it's still the movie. It's great when the movie is still alive, even after year after the premiere. So it doesn't like die and go away. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Um, I see a couple of things I want to bring up. Uh, I know you, do you still have 20 minutes? Should I wrap this up or? No, I still, I have another interview at four 30. So yes, yes. All right. I so, to. okay. I don't want to keep going. I'll edit this part. No, actually four, 4 okay. PM. All right. I'll wrap it up here in a minute. I just want to ask a couple of things here. Okay. No, that's fine. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Um, so what's it like on set when you're filming, uh, violent scenes against women? Well, it's uh, it's hard for everyone uh, because it's not like camera sees everything, you know. So you cannot cheat so much. Of course, you're cheating as much as you can, and you don't want to hurt anyone, and you're not beating anyone, and that's why you have uh, all these like uh, I don't know how it's called, like a fight fight coordinators who, mm -hmm. who like they help with what the moves are so nobody hurts anyone but it looks like that or they even help with like maybe this angle of the camera could work uh so when they are doing this movement so so this is like very practical and technical um but in terms of the you know of the shooting itself like for example the scene we have in night siren that's like i would say most harsh it was a long shoot during the night because you have a lot of characters and just one camera, so you have to, you know, capture everyone. And uh, yeah, it, it was. It's mostly about like keeping the spirit there, like so the people are not just like, okay, I don't want to be here anymore. Nobody wants to yeah. do this stuff, you know. <laughs> it's not very pleasant, but everybody understands why we have to do it. Why is it important for the movie? 
and that's that's how we can get to, to great performances. Yeah, I thought it was really powerful that you show that the children are watching the dad, because uh, I think you know in your head you like that's gonna that's gonna be like the cycle because they're probably gonna grow up like him because they see yeah. that's just how things are supposed to be. Yes, and again, yes, that's exactly. something I think anyone could relate to. It wouldn't have to be you know live in Slovakia or in a village or anything. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is universal. I think we all we are all humans in whatever culture we are coming from, and. And we are dealing with same problems more or less in different parts of the world. And yeah, the like uh, violence is a huge problem everywhere. Uh, violence against the vulnerable, which is women and children, is something that is more or less common. And uh, yeah, I think there is not yet enough films talking about it. And especially, I think we need more films that are going to be for perspectives that are maybe not only male you know like it's a it's i think it it's a different different thing because i know for me they say like i have harsh film uh, scenes in my movie like my first movie was about rape and i also wanted to show a lot i wanted the audience to be there with the victim and this is something you know it might look like i am I don't know that I'm just trying to squeeze the the audience or the scene, uh, but what I'm trying to do is put the audience in a place where this is not pleasant even for them because we are so used to violence on screen, like you know, in all the action movies and everything. Yeah, I just saw but the that, Expendables, and you know, it's it's meaningless violence at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're like kind of dumped down, and then you know, when we see violence in a movie that is supposed to say something else we're just like yeah violence you know but then when you kind of give more time to it or put the audience in a place where it is you know it is awkward or it is something that is not pleasant that's the moment when they start to be like what is happening you know well, i don't feel good and, and and then they might start to think about it differently well, uh, I really enjoyed talking with you. I really like Night Siren, and I hope people check it out. Um, I know you just played in New York. I think it's out on Blu-ray in UK, and do you know where it'll go from here? Yeah, it's now. It's in New York and LA, and it will be on VOD, I think, from October 24th. That's that's so far, I know, but um, look at the social media or elsewhere. There's going to be more information. All right, very cool. And I, I would like to check out your previous movie. I've not seen it. It's called Filthy. And in America, I think it's on this new platform called Gallery. Okay, cool. I will check that out. All right. Well, I yeah, appreciate you doing you. this. Yeah, 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 thank you very much. Guys, I hate to break this to you, but you're dead. You know, you can't smoke. Well, you can light him up and blow the smoke in my face. I'm the worst kind of person. I've been cursed as poltergeist despite the word frightener. Right, Flirting with death because I couldn't wait to reunite with her. Trying to get my numbers up, so I've been two timing her. Y'all can see there's more to tell. I can feel the scorch of hell. Stock weather can suck my dick, cause I got me a score 12. Got me creeping through the halls, see me seeping through the walls. They don't even believe in me. Let's play a game of true or false. True that I'm the villain and I'ma make a killing. But what do they say? That ain't no way to make a living. Uh, don't be a victim. Shit, what are you chicken? If this ain't anything. And then I'm rearranging the kitchen uh, I couldn't stop it if I wanted I gotta finish what I started I guess there were too many skeletons in my closet I don't stop until the screaming starts I call it bleeding art You don't need to see this part Sorry pops, I'ma need your heart Should've exercised Call a fucking exorcist Neck romance a perfectionist With an endless list of fresh additions Rest in piss or dismember me Or end this shit I don't fare well, you'll die as well And you thought guys like me fried in hell They said she was an excess after the fact, but it was cold, blooded, murder. Final farewell, you'll die as well. And you thought guys like me fried and hell. They said she was an accessory after the fact, but it was cold, blooded, murder. And roll the shadow of death me head to the blood stain on your carpet Who do you imagine will go next in the house of a madman like Bartlett Ho No talking to the feds or get this shotgun to the head Leave your ass like Miss Bradley all fucked up in the bed And between that Frank and that Dammers, they gon' need an examiner Cause one flew over the cuckoo's nest and one flew over the banister When I'm watching them go to pieces, am I a psycho or genius? It's just a case of spontaneous recurrent psychokinesis Looking like it's a whodunit, even though I'm published I've risen above it, and this day the wicked will be punished Before we get a whole lot of holy water to bore me Everybody gonna know my story
story. Got me a score of 40. Street to street, people flee from the entity. All my enemies could go gun down on their knees. But they don't even budge. Slay him just for fun. But they can hold a grudge. I say save it for the judge. You're comfortably numb like bed rest. Please remove your headdress. Looking in the mirror like, aren't you dead yet? I don't give a motherfuck. See you when your number's up. They say no fear to reap. But well, I'm here to shut them up. I don't well, you'll die as well And you saw guys like me fried in hell They said she was an accessory after the fact But it was cold, blooded, murder Thought all farewell, you'll die as well And you saw guys like me fried in hell They said she was an accessory after the fact But it was cold, blooded, murder Final farewell, you'll die as well And you saw guys like me fried in hell They said she was an accessory after the fact But it was cold, blooded, murder Final farewell, you'll die as well And you saw guys like me fried in hell They said she was an accessory after the fact But it was cold, blooded, murder